I just want to spend a few minutes talking about the large signal properties and again I am not going to do it with, with uh, the active load, I will do it with the resistive load and then uh, where lambda n equal to lambda p is 0 and leave it at that. This is VDD, this is R, this is R. So, this is uh, uh, VCM plus VD, this is VCM minus VD. The question is what happens to the currents I1 and I2 when VD is not small, correct? Before we get into the algebra, let us basically get our intuition straight. Uh, so, for uh, uh, for very large V d positive V d, what comment can you make about uh, this current, uh, which transistor M 1 or M 2, which of them will have? So, basically if you go on increasing the gate of M 1. M1 uh, M1 will steal more and more current of more and more of that 2 I naught. So, uh, uh, I1 must be greater than I2 is ok, but if you go on increasing what what is the maximum I1 can be 2 1. So, if you go on increasing M1 what will happen? It will steal more and more current. So, M2 M2 will get cut off. So, I1 will be equal to 2 I naught. I2 is equal to 0. And likewise for uh, uh, for uh, large Vd less than 0, what comment can we make? Well, I1 becomes 0 now and I2 M2 steals all the current. So, basically if you plot for instance I 1, for V d equal to 0 what should we get? So, if you plot I 1 you basically get, for V d equal to 0 what should we get for I 1? I naught right and then for uh, large positive V d it should do something like this, right. And for large negative Vd, do something. So, we use a different color. Okay. Now, the question is you know we should go and be able to calculate what that what the actual characteristic is. Hmm? All right. So, uh, let us uh, uh, quickly get through the algebra. So, uh, what are the constraints? Let us assume that this uh, this overdrive of this transistor is delta V 1, the overdrive of M 2 is delta V 2. So, delta V 1 minus delta V 2 is nothing but what is delta 1 minus delta V 2? 2 V and that is regardless of I mean you know uh, even if V uh, if V d becomes large I guess that is as long as the transistors are not cut off you are ok, this is fine right. Assuming why, why am I saying no devices off? Yeah otherwise there will not there will not be any delta straightforward. Hmm? Okay. And uh, what is the other constraint? 
pattern we want i mean what do we want to find actually yeah if you want to find current you have to find delta v and the overdrives equivalently so we have two overdrives to find we need two equations one equation is here what is the other equation i1 plus i2 is 2i0 so basically it's one half mu n c ox w by l times delta v 1 square plus delta v 2 square equals 2 1. Okay. So, now the question is how do you find? So, delta v 1 square from the first equation, I mean this is now just algebra, there is no major insight here minus 2 delta v 1 delta v 2 is 4 v d square, right. But uh, this guy is equal to 4 i naught over mu n c ox w by l, right. So, this minus 4 v d square therefore, square root of oh sorry uh, this is equal to uh, 2 delta v 1 delta v 2. Okay. So, uh, now we can uh, 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 add this to the second equation. So, if I add 4 i naught over mu n c ox w by l to this equation, uh, am I okay? What will I get? Yeah, we get delta v 1 plus delta v 2 the whole square and therefore, that is nothing but delta v 1 plus delta v 2 therefore, is nothing but square root of 8 i naught over mu n c ox w by l minus 4 v d square. Okay. And delta v 1 minus delta v 2 is 2 v d so, delta v 1 therefore, is nothing but v d plus half of this, uh, this guy, we can take the square root inside and get 2 i naught over mu n c ox w by l minus v d square. Okay, sanity check. V d is 0, what should we expect the overdrive to be? Chaudhary, V d is 0. What is the equation telling us and what do we expect? Yeah, and which must be equal to what? So, it is, you agree or no? Our formula is okay or no? Seems to be okay, all right. Okay. So, what is uh, uh, now, what is our, uh, uh, what is our, uh, uh, what is the current therefore? I 1 therefore, is nothing but 1 half mu n c ox w by l times delta v 1 the square. So, basically this is v d square plus 2 i naught by mu n c ox w by l minus v d square uh, plus 2 v d square root of 
2 i naught by mu n c ox w by l minus a d square. Okay. So, as you can see this is not the most fun thing to be doing on a Friday evening, right? but doing things like this builds character, let us do it. Hmm? Okay. So, this goes away. So, what do we get? I 1 therefore, is Roy first term I naught okay, plus So, mu n c ox w by l into v d the square root of 2 i naught by c ox w by l minus a d square. Now, this can be uh, 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 simplified by pushing this one here. So, you basically will get v d times square root of 2 i naught mu n c ox w by l minus no mu n c ox w by l times by l whole square huh? times v d square. Okay, or equivalently you could have pulled out uh, uh, that i uh, that i naught out and then uh, written it uh, uh, differently okay so for sanity check v d equal to 0 i naught right okay what else can we do uh, for small v d what uh, which term can you neglect here you can neglect the v d square so uh, uh, we get small v d we should get i naught plus v d what we actually get is this mu n c ox w by l and why does this make sense? This is nothing but this is nothing but g at the operating point. Is clear folks? Pardon? Yeah, yeah, no, no, I mean this is just a sanity check, that is all I am saying, right. This makes sense, okay. Now, uh, when uh, you know what is the largest VD that you can apply? Yeah. So, basically, uh, uh, what do you call uh, as VD keeps increasing? Have we made, have we made a mistake or what? Uh, sign missing somewhere? Are we okay. Yeah, we are okay. All right. So, uh, you know you can go on as you go as the uh, the uh, the uh, as V D goes on increasing right. Uh, basically, uh, the discriminant must become 0 I mean eventually the maximum V D you can use is the one where the discriminant becomes uh, 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 0. So, at that point you will find that the, tot the current will be the total current will be 2 I know. Okay, and beyond that, you know, nothing will happen. I mean, you know, uh, the current will remain two. And uh, for I two, it will be uh, the complementary behavior. So this is I one. This is uh, uh, yeah two I naught minus the sum of the two anyway have to be equal to two I naught. So basically, the other one must must do something like this. Okay. So, you can see that this uh, differential pair has got a nice natural limiting function, right. And in the past, when uh, when neural networks were the rage, like some 40 years ago, uh, people used these kinds of things to generate. I, I do not know how many of you are familiar with some some uh, some basic stuff about uh, with so much uh, talk about AI going around, right. A neuron is basically something which takes multiple inputs and then you know thresholds it, this is called a threshold function. Right, and uh, so um, a differential pair is one way of getting getting this uh, stuff. Okay. All right. 
So, with this we have uh, uh, you know we have uh, finished uh, uh, all that we needed to uh, learn about the differential pair, small and large signal properties and the uh, the active load as well as you know the right way of deriving the gain of the active load and the wrong way of deriving right ok. But uh, the wrong way is useful in the sense that uh, you know uh, when you remember when you have to remember the formula you, you just basically assume that uh, source is grounded and then that is the formula. But uh, as you can see the analysis is actually quite quite involved ok. And uh, the, those of you who are brave can basically you know uh, replace every transistor with its incremental equivalent and and go through the algebra right and uh, it will be very messy ok. And you can convince yourselves and your friends that it is indeed close to 2 g m n times v d times r o n parallel r o p all right. So, our next job is now I mean so we now we have now have a good handle on the first stage of the of an operational amplifier, but uh, the gain is still only of the order of you know g m and g m times r o right r o n parallel r o p is roughly r o by 2 g m 2 g m n is basically uh, that 2 and this 2 gets cancelled and roughly of the order of g m r o. g m r o is typically maybe 40, 50 if you are if you are lucky otherwise 10, 15. So, you need you need more gain. So, uh, how can you get uh, more gain? Yeah, you can uh, one way of getting it is the two fundamental ways of getting more gain. You, if you want to take something you make it more you, you actually add multiple copies or you multiply right. So, uh, multiplication is done easily by cascading stages. So, what is the next stage that we will put? We want more gain which what is the simplest uh, 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 transistor stage which gives us uh, which gives us gain common source. So, we have to cascade this differential pair with active load with a common source right. So, we will discuss this uh, in the next class ok.